We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Well, welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. How are you doing today? Um, I'm uh flustered. We're having some audio issues. We're starting late. Um, I turn into a big baby if there's a technical issue. You know what the, you know what this calls for, Jared? I think I think beer. Austin, I think Austin's on the right track here. I think I think it's a time for a good old old fashioned um anchors, anchors? up. Okay, hold on, <laughs> hold on, run it back, run it back. I'm not. We're not editing anything. We're not editing anything. But let's go old school for a second. Let's all pretend like the show. Um, for those of you listening to the audio only, like pod, actual like proper podcast version of this, uh, pretend like the music played again. Just, just go ahead. Use your, use your imagination. Okay, here we go. Anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? That sounded right, Jared. It, it, <laughs> that sounded should... right. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, honest question: Are are we the Chargers of Ohio State podcasting? We're like we have the best old school uniforms on the planet, but we never wear them. We keep insisting on this navy color, but everyone wants the powder blues. Are are we fucking up? Do we go back to the old schools? Mm. Let me think about that. Maybe Let we go back to the old schools. Yeah. Maybe we go back to the old schools. We'll think about it. We'll think about it. Right, mix it um, in. So, we might just mix so, it in. You might make hey, it a cocktail of openings. Hey, Jared. We we actually have football now. Football camp has started. We already had two practices already under uh, under their belts late last week. Uh, Ryan Day gave a little gave a little talk to the um, to the media recently, and. Uh, on top of that, we got a boom. We have a we have a new commit uh, this weekend as well. Uh, probably to no surprise here, uh, uh, Arvell Reese over yeah. at Glenville High School. That pipeline's coming back. Yes, sir. I'm just letting you know right now that pipeline is coming back. Um, yeah, when Ohio State missed on a couple on a couple linebackers. Um, it's it, it definitely opened the door for Reese to you know take action on his commitment. Um, I I think that Ohio State. What I, I had him. I think in the last mock, I am pretty sure maybe it was the last two mocks, but at least the last mock, I had him in the class. I did think eventually he ended up in the class, um, even if like Tackett Curtis does commit to Ohio State, which he doesn't. Um, but even if he had, I still think Reese ends up in this class. But with uh, with Reese deciding, or excuse me, with uh, Tackett Curtis deciding to go to USC, I think it made uh, Reese's commitment to Ohio State a win win all around. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this this is a uh, reopening that Glenville pipeline. I'm all for it. Yep, he's a he's a four star uh, commit, twentieth best linebacker per the composite over at twenty four seven Sports, the seventh best in the great state of Ohio, and that moves Ohio State back up to third in the uh, recruiting rankings. There's a there's another one on the way too. Mm -hmm. Yep, a lot of a lot of momentum in the recruiting circles about Bosno uh, committing to Ohio State, so. There'll be another defensive player to add to the class. Guys, recruiting has peaks and valleys. I know uh, the <laughs> defensive recruiting stuff has been frustrating as of late. It's fine. Literally every year we have like a week or so where it just feels like a bunch of bad news happens all at once. It yeah. happens every year. People I mean, tend I mean, to forget that it happens every year, but it happens every year. But, and if it happens in August, that's fine. What you don't want is for this to happen in December. It happens in August, then you have you have a chance to adjust, find new players. But, you know, when things fall apart in December, then you're just kind of screwed. Mm -hmm. I mean... I think I think some people just kind of need to 
take a step back and look. I mean, Ohio State currently has a top five or third best recruiting uh, recruiting um, overall for the 2023 class. Like, it just chill. Just chill. It's Everything's going to be all right. <laughs> everything's all right. fine. Uh, all right, Jared, let's get into it. Um, we are, we're going back into the sloop camp mode here. Um, fall camp. I feel like we're going to be in sloop camp mode for a while. <laughs> yeah. For the next few weeks, uh, we're back in sloop camp. Fall camp has started and let's hear what Ryan day has to say here. Ryan day, uh, got to talk with the media, uh, answered a few questions, uh, in line us of what he's seen so far. And uh, yeah, let's. Let's get right into it, Jared. Let's, let's, let's. So one of, one of the things that we talked about last week, maybe even the week before too, one of the things that you hear a lot, well, especially in the Big Ten uh, media day, toughness and discipline were the yeah. key words that you, you hear from Ryan Day and the players. And no different here, and that's pretty much what Ryan Day started off here saying toughness, discipline are the focus in the camp here. Yeah, he adds skill, which we weren't getting at media day. Uh, at media day, it was more like toughness and leadership, toughness and leadership, toughness, leadership. You get a little bit of discipline mixed in there. Like those, that and the, the we failed to meet our three goals. We have three goals. We have to meet our three goals. Like th those were the repetitive talking points at media day. Um uh, now that camp has started, it's toughness, discipline, skill. And that's that's where we're at. Like, you know, at this point, you know, the leadership already has to be in place. You can't you're not going to develop. Not not from not from zero to 100, at least. You aren't going to develop leadership in camp. Those leaders probably have to be in place. Yep, yep. Absolutely. So we're, we're going to constantly hear that, not just the fall camp, but we're going to hear that all, all season along here. All right. Uh, let's see. Next, next thing that Ryan Day talked about here. Um, I'm just doing verbatim here. Uh, By the way, just, just for the record, we are pulling these yep. um, from Buckeye Huddle from the goat himself, Tony Gerdeman. Uh, just just so we're giving credit where credit's due. These are uh, yeah, his absolutely. his uh, press conference notes. We're pulling these from. Yeah. Uh, next thing that Ryan Day talked about was about uh, personnel on offense and finding the best ways to use it. Each year's um, has its changes, its new challenges. That is the art of college coaching. And I, I think that's that's the big thing there is that you can bring in all the talent you want if you don't have the right coaching staff to mop, to mold and, and use the players at the, um, uh, at the best that they can do in their position, you're, you're not going to succeed too. So have, having the right coaches is a big part of that. Having the right coaches, having the right players, um, which is one of the, the key differences between, I would say, especially as a fan, I would say between like the NFL and college football is just the constant turnover of the roster. I think that's one of the things that makes it fun mm -hmm. is just this constant turnover of the roster. Like, you know, if a guy's a stud, you're only getting him for like three years. And then it's just yeah. like onto the next guy and onto the next guy. So it's like, you're always constantly looking at the next, looking at the next. And it's, it sort of keeps, the product fresh and fun. I think that's one of the reasons why I enjoy college football more than I enjoy the NFL. Uh, just sort of that constant turnover. But I'm, but as a coach, ev like every three years at Ohio state, it's a brand new team. Yes. Yep. And getting all of that together, getting all of that together in one spot. And yeah, I uh, get just, Getting all of the players in position, working together in the correct spots, 
It's one of the big deals. It's one of the, the big challenges, but also one of the big points of entertainment, at least for me uh, as a college football fan. Yep. And Jared, we have, we have a, we have a visitor here. We have a, we have someone who I haven't seen in a while here, Jared. Uh, uh-huh. Michigan Bucknut joins us here. Hey, our geographical challenge friend, Michigan Bucknut. What's up, buddy? <laughs> Lou. Uh, ne- next thing here, uh, a name that a lot of people were kind of curious about, uh, and that's our that's our uh, kicker, Jake Siebert. Uh, a lot of people were kind yeah. of wondering, like, what, what, what the heck's going on with Jake Siebert here? Well, come to find out, he's 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 moved over to cornerback right now. Not moving. Uh, Adding, he's adding cornerback. <laughs> he's he's at the cornerback right now. Uh, Ryan Day said he wanted to bring some different value, but uh-huh. he'll also be kicking too. Uh huh. Um, I'm going <laughs> to. Says we prefer we prefer no no struggles ruggles in these parts. <laughs> well, don't don't worry, my friend. There's a reason. There's a reason. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna hold on. I need to. I need to reach into my pocket. I have. I need to play. I need to play my. Uh, don't say anything bad about college players card. Don't. Don't be mean to college players card. And uh, go ahead and stop my uh, line of of thought here. And maybe we should just move on to the next question. <laughs> All right. Um. Let's see here. Uh, how does he assess defensive progress in camp? Uh, he says, once they get pads on, they'll have a better understanding, but you can tell by their confidence too when they antici- anticipate instead of react. And that is something that we've been harking on for the past couple of years. Yeah, yeah. Always seemed like always seemed like Ohio State waits to see where the where the play is going instead of anticipating where it's going to. That's one of the things we've heard from and we'll probably can. So, again, we're talking about like talking points, like the players being given talking points when, you know, talking to the media. Right. Um, One of the things we have heard a few times and like I said, we'll probably continue to hear is, well, what we're doing on defense, we're playing offense on defense that playing offense on defense, playing offense on defense, make them adjust to us. We want to play offense on defense, make them adjust to us. Uh, so that's, that's something that we heard um, Ronnie Hickman say during the big 10 uh, media interview. Um, just realized the Ohio state only has six scholarship cornerbacks right now. What the fuck? Yeah. Um, the good news is, is that, Four of them are highly playable right now. And that Ohio State's playing most likely three safeties. So that helps yeah. too. <laughs> yes. And one of the reasons, Austin, that you have, you know, we just need depth, Austin, though, but one of the reasons why you have so many or so few corners and so many safeties on the team right now is that several guys who were recruited as corners have been moved to safety. Yeah. So there are recruited corners on the team currently listed as safety. So in, if in the case of like a long-term injury, a guy could be moved back. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, And any of those safeties move to corner. Yeah. That, yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Um, Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, talks about you don't uh, want to. Asked, they were moved to safety for a reason, but in a pinch, yes. Someone asked about what what position he's curious about, and he said that he really doesn't have one. Um, he said it's fun seeing everybody work out. He has high hopes for everyone. Um, they had a great off season. It's fun to see the guys who have been here for two to three year, years and see where they are now. Um, yeah, good, I don't good. know. I don't know if there's any uh, deciphering to take place there. Um, nope. Uh, w- w- one of the key things here that a lot of people are curious about is that tight end uh, position here. For sure. Uh, Ryan Day said that as a whole, um, the the group had a great summer. Stover had an unbelievable summer. Uh, they have a chance to have good depth, but they have to build and grow. Yeah, um, on our Wednesday episode, we're going to be 
uh, doing like player projections. What 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 roles do we expect the players to play this upcoming season? So you can you can think of it as like a bit of a depth chart project projection, but we're kind of we kind of felt a little restricted by doing a depth chart projection. So instead, we're just doing a role projection, which will kind of be but not exactly be the same thing as a depth chart projection. Uh, but one of the more interesting conversations, one of the more interesting position battles in camp this week, this week, this year is the the tight end position, because I think you have three guys with totally different skill sets, all very talented. And how will the snaps be divvied up among those three players? I think it's uh it's a great, it's a great, like, it's a great question. Like, I, I don't know. It's one of the yeah. few spots in the depth chart where I just kind of go, I don't know. Uh, talking Next, talking about running backs here. Um, but yes, will we be some fullback sets? We'll find out. We'll find out, yeah. Uh, almost a fullback, but the running back... Uh, says here carries and reps will be split up um he told he told the team to let the reps speak for them uh then it comes down to being game ready can this person help us beat notre dame so it, it just sounds like that just trying to get equal to share so it's not just henderson or mayan um taking taking all the reps here trying to save some save some legs save some save some hits um, well, actually, they're not really doing big. Um, they will, though. Fall on, fall on go mode yet, but. But they will. But they will. Yeah. Uh, Justin Fry w- wanted to start all the freshmen out at tackle to get their feet moving in that direction. They could all move inside down the road, but this is where they're starting now. And I think that's exactly what you should be doing. Um all the guys who think they can play tackle, let them play tackle. Let them try. And if it doesn't work out, bump them inside. Yeah. That's, I, I think that's exactly what you do. I mean, and one of the other things that we have to keep an eye on and what we will continue to keep an eye on this camp is offensive line depth. We know who the five guys are. We know who the five starters are. All along the offensive line are. And we probably know Emok Vamahi is the first guard, uh, the first backup guard. Mm-hmm. Who's the first backup tackle? Or will it be side dependent? With guards, you kind of throw them in at left, you throw them in at right. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter as much. Tackle? Sometimes a guy is much better on one side than he is the other. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. Um, will we have one dedicated uh, tackle backup or are we going to have one guy? And again, who are those guys? Some, uh, another important position battle, depth battle uh, to watch this camp season. Donovan then... Vamahi. Oh, he could be first tackle to move. So you're saying move Donovan Jackson outside, then put Vamahi in to replace him at guard is what you're saying. Um, maybe, maybe not. Um, it, I think it just depends upon, it greatly depends upon Donovan and Jones at guard. Yes. Whipler at center. Yes. But I think he's saying, like, what happens if Paris Johnson Jr. gets hurt? Do you bump Donovan outside and put in Vamahi at guard? Or are, I think a lot of that, he's a natural guard. Maybe. Uh, maybe. He might not be. Um, he was recruited as a tackle slash guard. He, yeah, he and he has the body dimensions of a mm-hmm. of a tackle. Um, 
a lot of that just might depend upon like how good do they feel uh, with their offensive tackles. Because if they feel like they only have, I think he's a better guard than a tackle personally. Uh, you, we just we have to trust we have to trust the coaches on that one. I don't think yep. I've seen enough to be able to say one way or the other. But in my opinion, a lot of it like. Does Donovan Jackson get moved outside and Vamahi moved in at guard? Maybe in a long-term scenario, an in-game scenario, they probably will lean on a backup tackle. And if they continue to stick with the backup tackle long-term, probably depends mostly on, you know, how do they feel about Zen Mikowski right now? How do they feel about... Um, I'm blanking on his name. There's the other tackle who they really like, and I'm totally blanking on his name. Someone help me. Um, yeah, uh, Fryer. Uh, well, gosh, who, who, hold on. Let me pull the roster up. You got Fryer. You got James Johnson. Whippler. You got Chrisman Jackson. one of the Jones. Yeah. Um, it's, it's fine. Uh, unless Chrisman is a stud. Yeah. Uh, it's probably, it probably Chrisman, I would say, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. Chrisman uh, uh, or Macau, uh, Chrisman or Mikowski probably. All right. Um, next question here. Obviously it's the, the big question here for the sheriff how well Ohio State's going to do as a whole to be that uh, championship contender here is the defense. Uh, defense, he goes on to talk about the defense, about having more experience than last year. Says he likes what they're doing schematically. Should be a top 10 defense because this is Ohio State. Offense, defense, special teams should all be top 10. And yeah, that is the expectation. And that's, that's, the, that's the mindset you should always have at a top tier uh, program uh, feedback from the defensive coaches is how impressive the approach from the players have been and how they've handled the installation. But at the end of the day, they have to stop the run. And that's what we saw last year about anytime that Ohio state struggled, it was because they couldn't stop the run. I mean, week one, how, how, how hard it was for Ohio state to stop Minnesota <laughs> to, um, to stop the run there and then other games as well too obviously obviously that michigan game and uh some other ones too they just you you look you look and are watching the game and you just you just get frustrated because you know this is a much better team than what you are seeing but it's just yeah it's just frustrating watching them so them under them knowing and understanding that that's that was a big issue last year and years before too and that's something that they are really working towards to um to improve for this year uh esquire asks asks are there tackles out there still recruiting for 2023 yeah um i don't necessarily know who right now but absolutely um ohio the 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 buckeyes are lucky um because there there was a good amount they they had some in-state talent uh along the offensive line that they were able to to jump on and there's some really nice on or in state talent in 2024 as well so as they sort of start to rebuild their reputation as far as developing offensive linemen and putting them into the nfl because that's a it's a reputation that has slipped a bit. Uh, twenty four O line recruits will be better than twenty three O line recruits. Maybe um, there one high school in particular. <laughs> um, but yeah, the um, there's some really good offensive line talent in state that will again help sort of help to hold over Ohio State. Um, 
it, as far as like keeping the recruiting up and getting talented offensive linemen into or on to the roster. I can't I can't mm-hmm. prepositional phrase today um, onto the roster. While, um, like I said, improving, rebuilding the reputation for putting offensive tackles into the first round of the NFL draft. Yep. All right, so so next Saturday, Jared is uh, Ohio State's first scrimmage. Uh, Ryan Day talks about the scrimmage here and about and understanding how much progress they've made since the spring and have a good understanding who's who's going to be the guys and where, where they stand. Um, he said like this time last year, um, he he said that he he was concerned a lot of it because of the 2020 year. Um, they didn't have a lot of games to get the younger guys reps. Um, they missed guys like Myers and Davis and, and um, Luke Farrell. Uh, they knew they had talented players, but so many of them had never played this year. It's different because they have played more players. And, and, and that was, and that was the thing in, in 2022 that we've, we've talked about um, during the season and after, and even before just, all around that 2020 season, just how much issues many, many teams were going to have for um, because of because of shortened season or no season at all, depending on the teams. Yeah, and we still saw, and I think that's what Ryan Day, I think, was saying either here or in another um, in another piece of the press conference. Again, talk about, you know, talking points, right? The talking points that we're getting out of Ryan Day. Um, without trying to make it sound like an excuse. But also, he's kind of an excuse. Um, he's reminding us a lot that last year's defensive team was very, very young. Is a very, and it, he's not wrong. So the the good news about a young defense is that they get older. So youngest team in the country last year. Yeah. So the good news about a young team is that they get older. Uh, The bad news about a young team in the year of 2021 was that that young team didn't even get a chance to, you know, get some reps against the Akrons or whomever of the world. Um, didn't get a lot of practice time because 2020 was 2020. Not a lot of games, not a lot of practices. Um, so not only was last year's team a young team, but it was also a young team that was even less experienced than you would anticipate that young of a team being because 2020 was 2020. Um, that being said, and there's no excuse to be made here because those people are no longer with jobs at Ohio state. The defensive schematics were still terrible. The defensive game plans were still terrible. Mm -hmm. So we look at a lot of the players returning from last year's team to this year's team. And we need to give a lot of them some grace and some patience and a, a second chance. Because a lot of these players are players that the fans have decided they don't like already. They, yeah. They've already made up their minds about them. And again, very, very young team working with n- practically no development in the year 2020. Um, and then playing with their shoes tied by the defensive scheme and the defensive game plan from last year. The, the fact that any of these guys um, did anything last year at all is sometimes a bit of a miracle. Yep. Are we going to be looking at this defense as a four, two, five? You will see a lot of four, two, five. You will. Yes. yes. Um, at Oklahoma, it was mostly almost entirely a four, or excuse me, Oklahoma State, almost entirely a four-two-five. Now that being said, that was the Big Twelve, where like 
everyone in the conference, except for Oklahoma State and like Kansas State, are spread offenses being spread offenses all over the spreading field. Like, that's not what you're going to see in the Big Ten as much. Still some spread offenses in the Big Ten for sure, but you still have the Wisconsin's and the Michigan's and the Iowa's who are very much not spread offenses. So will we see an adjustment against those teams? Uh, That's yet to be seen. But at Oklahoma State, this defense was primarily a 4-2-5. Yes. Yep. Yeah. But that being said, that third safety played, uh, you know, what we would have called in the past a, you know, a bullet role in, you know, sort of a hybrid safety linebacker. So, yeah. All right. Um, Ryan Day talking about a few players here. Uh, still waiting on eligibility for Parker Lewis. Uh, Julian Fleming. Um said that um, he had a great offseason, was named an Iron Buckeye. Um, he, his best offseason as a Buckeye. Um, but the receiver group as a whole were strong and tougher on the perimeter. They need to be able to make plays, and they want leadership there too. Uh, Matt, Matt Jones and Donovan Jackson on um, uh, saying that he, they both bring strength and leverage and power. They're built like guards. Yeah. So, you know, maybe maybe a maybe a bit of a feather in Austin's cap on that one, as far as the guys being built like guards, right? Um, yes. <laughs> uh, the playing, the playing tackles at guard. I think that experiment's over. Yep. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and that's not to say they won't still do it it's- sometimes. Um, it, was a, it was a good idea. Then you do have idea. when you do have a guy like Donovan yeah. Jackson who is a bit of a hybrid, like kind of can play either, right? Um, it was a good idea to get your best players yes. on the field. Yeah. Um, in on paper, it was a good idea. Um, yes. when passing the ball, it was a good idea. Um, <laughs> on third and one, idea. it was less of a good idea. Yeah. Just because someone's uh, a good kicker doesn't mean they should punt or play corner. <laughs> uh, let's see here. What what else? What else did he talk about? Uh, he says on offense they have to be able to block everything. Defense they have to stop everything. But you can't work on that every day in fall practice because you also have to work on fundamentals. Uh, but there are times when you need the kitchen sink thrown at the players. For sure. Uh, And one of the things I'm really excited about as far as having, you know, Knowles, basically the the head coach of the defense. One of the things I'm really excited about in that respect is I want to see Knowles game plan against Ohio State's offense. What what can Knowles show Ryan Day what can Knowles try to pick at? What can Knowles try to, you know, beat or find a weakness in Ryan Day's offense? What can he do? And what can he show Ryan Day could be a weakness or a vulnerability in his offense? Yep. And how does he teach Ryan Day that that is a vulnerability before Notre Dame figures it out? or before yep. Michigan figures it out or before Georgia, Alabama, Clemson figure it out. Yeah. Uh, iron sharpens n- iron after all. Yeah. More, more player names here thrown out. Talks about Tyleek Williams. Uh, talks about Tyleek um, changing his body, but they need more consistency out of him. He can rush the passer great, but they need him to stop the run as well. Yeah. Uh, Sticking with the defensive line, he said that. Real, real, real quick, that, Kyle. Austin Austin said that they should just play six offensive linemen. They did that last year. Donovan Jackson got playing time um, as a sixth offensive lineman on the field last year. The, yeah. the, the fact that Ohio State was struggling in short yardage is why we saw that. 
Uh, the fact that they are struggling on offense, uh, you know, with that short yardage is why we actually saw fullback on the on the field once or twice last year. Yeah, the, this is not what Ryan Day wants to do. Uh, these were adjustments they were making. Mm-hmm. Uh, flipping the flipping the side of the ball here, talk about the defensive line, said, saying that the unit has great talent and good depth. But now it's time to have the guys step up and show who can be counted on. It's one thing to have depth and to roll guys, but they need guys that they can count on to make plays. Goes on to say that they probably have about four to five defensive tackles they can count on. Same with defensive ends. So if that's if that's true, we we'll have to keep that. We we'll have to keep that number in mind for the for the Wednesday yeah. pod, Kyle. If, if if that's the case, then then that's that. Re- that reminded me a lot of, um, was that five, six years ago when we had uh, that ridiculous uh, defensive line group when they just were able just to yeah. turn people in and out just constantly and just, yeah. yeah it's, it's good to hear, but rule number one, Jared. But <laughs> they got to be thinking Williams, Vincent Cage, Hamilton. I don't feel like you can trust all four of those DTs. I think you can. And now that's not to say that I don't think some of them are potentially better than others. And again, Austin, um, I, you have to, you do have to give these guys some grace as far as, especially the younger guys, the guys who are only like coming into their third year. Well, you don't, I, but you're right. You don't, but you yes, you should like, if you only play, if you've only been at the, this is your third year, if you're a true junior or a redshirt sophomore, your years under your belt right now are 2020. And then the abomination that was the defense and the defensive coaching last year. I don't know if these guys have been given a proper opportunity. If these guys have been put in the best position to succeed, to do the best. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of my favorite, one of my favorite things, Jared, and I'm really looking forward to, to see if, if this will be the year, Jared, if this will finally be the year, Ohio State finally takes one to the house. Uh, he said, <laughs> Ryan Day talks about having more guys than, than JSN who can field punts. Uh, it requires a unique skill set. You have to have guys who can fair catch, but also need guys who can return it. He wants to have about train about four to five guys. Um, but doesn't want to put doesn't want to put Jason in a dangerous position, which yeah, there's there is that. But I mean, when you when you have that kind of talent like Ted Ginn Jr. returning punts, but yet he's one of your main receivers too. You, you got you got to put him back there too, and just hope that they make the uh, the right the right call, the right play to either field it or fair catch it. I almost feel like it's better to put JSN back there only because he's probably not going to press it. Like if you, if you, if you put, if you put um, someone back there who isn't getting a lot of touches on the offense, they might try and force something Mm -hmm. when like this, this is not Jim Trestle's offense or Jim Trestle's special teams. It's not like, I, Ohio State does not give a shit if they can get an extra ten yards on a punt return. I, they'll I they'll agree. just give the ball to Henderson an extra time. It's fine. Yeah, I think I think right now you you put JSN to field punts, but you put Emeka because I man there there was there was there was a, quite a few times, especially towards the end of the season, middle end of the season. Emeka was just one broken tackle away from taking it to the house. So I think I think you put Emeka to field uh, kick returns and JSN for the punt. Um, a live over under number of Ohio State players with greater than one kickoff return yard this season. Three kickoff and a half return yard Ooh, under. They have to get a yard, under. so no fair catches. Um, no, 
It can't just be like a return. They actually have to like gain a yard. So that would probably like if it's an onside kick, they're probably not going to get a yard. Uh, if, they, if they call for a fair catch, they're not going to get a yard. So someone who actually like does a legitimate return, which is a, it's a that was a great uh, addition to that, Austin. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll go with under. I'll go with under. I think I think it'll be two or three people. Um, I'm going to go over. I just feel like there's going to be a lot of blowout games. You know, a team gets a gets a it's a crappy score late. They kick off to someone who's like it, the number is uh, three and a half is so low. There's not a lot of margin for error there. Fair. Fair enough. Uh, something that we something we totally missed, Jared, and I I have not looked at any pictures. As we're recording this on Sunday, it was moving. It was moving day for Ohio State. <laughs> yep. Uh, moving into the hotel on Sunday allows the team to avoid distractions, gives them two weeks to focus and be together and not be scattered. Um, one of the new additions I mentioned earlier here, but Ryan Day goes in depth about it, was the Iron Buckeye. Uh, it's a it's the highest grade you can get during the off season, higher than gold. It translates to performance on the field. Uh, let's see here. And he finishes off saying in order to get game ready, players have to prove themselves every day, be physical, be consistent, be accountable, then try to create game situations every day. Then he also ends it by saying, uh, Cam Bob is great. 100%. I, I hope Cam Bob, uh, blows past my expectations of him this season. Um, I he's, I'm cheering for him. Um, it's just there's so many talented wide receivers on this team. It's like you when you uh, how many how many Austin you you want to you want a pro over under on this? I want him to be I want him to be there's what I want to happen, Austin, and there's what I think will happen. I want Bob to do so great that someone considers drafting him. Off of a single year of playing time. Mm. I, but I, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, how many receptions do we expect to take place outside of JSN and Marvin Harrison Jr.? Like, like, what do you mean by that? Passing receptions, let's say by wide receivers, by yeah. wide receivers. By guys not JSN or Marvin Harrison Jr. And then it what happens if you add Julian Fleming? I think that's probably your presumptive starting three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's your presumptive starting three, I think. How many how many receptions are left over for wide receivers at that point? Ten percent, fifteen, under that, under, over under twelve and a half percent. Okay, now now add a Mecca Abuka to that. How many receptions are left over for guys who aren't JSN, Marvin Harrison Jr., Julian Fleming, and a Mecca Abuka? Under seven <laughs> percent. You, you see what I'm saying? Like, I want Bob yeah. to have a great season and I want him, I want him to prove me wrong. I, I want him to be great and I want him to prove me wrong. I just don't know how many receptions are left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just don't know and how many receptions that, are left. And let's not forget any kind of uh, wheel routes or. I said um, four wide receivers. Ditch, ditch, ditch. Okay. I said four wide receivers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that was it. That was all. Um, that was all from Ryan Day. And again, by the way, Austin these, uh, did give all, us all a number. Notes, all of these notes that um, we read is from the goat Tony Gerdeman over over at Buckeye Huddle. By the way, Austin did give us a number. He says 12 game regular season minus JSN Fleming, Marvin Harrison Jr. He says over under 
And again, these are what wide receiver receptions, discounting those three players. 42 and a half all season. Mm. Which he says he he estimates at about 15% of the receptions. If you do 25 a game, which, yeah, some might be more, some might be less, depending upon uh, if Henderson is is letting other people. Oh, I know. It's totally off the cuff. I appreciate you actually following through on that. I wasn't necessarily expecting you to. Um, I'm going to go under. All right. So, all right, let's, let's look at last year. So if you take out the top three last year. Here, Last year's tough because of just how top heavy the wide receiver rotation was with the top three players. Like Mm -hmm. that's, I expect more rotation this year, which is to say there might actually be some rotation this year. It's almost just as too heavy this year, though, Jared. Do you want to get? Do you want to guess how many receptions there was outside the top three? It'll actually surprise you. Okay, uh, just wide receivers. Just wide receivers. Uh, Who had the most, and how many? Hmm? Who had the most, and how many? Uh, JSN had the most with ninety-five. Well, I, I, I wait, wait, wait. Outside the top three wide receivers? Oh, 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 outside the top three. Okay. Uh, the first one is Fleming with 12. Which, how many of those are actually in the ball game? I'd have to look deeper in that. Yeah, because as as Austin pointed out in the, in the chat, those numbers include the ball games. And his don't. Like, he just did 12 games. Um. I'll, uh, Julian, I want to say half of those happened in the Rose Bowl. Maybe, but still, what, what, what do you think the number is, Jared? What do you, you, you just total? said it was 12. No, no, no. Total receptions outside the top three receivers. 25. Uh, 37. 37. So 42 and a half is not, not, a, not a bad number. 42 and a half is not a bad number there from Austin. It's almost like he, he already looked it up. <laughs> oh, he, he didn't. didn't. He didn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, he said Fleming had, uh, Zach said Fleming had five of those 12 catches in the Rose Bowl. I said six. I said half. So I was close enough. Close enough. All right, Jared. I think that's it. I think that's, um, that is Ryan Day's, um, um, press conference there. And I th- think we'll go ahead and end it right there. All right. Um, yes. Austin is our over under wizard for sure. Um, yeah, that's it. That's the end of the show. Um, everyone, if you're watching us on YouTube, uh, we have this, uh, new little graphic over here that, um, yeah, I was doing it right the first time, uh, showing you all of our links. We have two different merch stores, um, one is like actual Sloopcast apparel. The other one, uh, is our 7071 store that, um, has just like Ohio stuff, but isn't branded as like podcast merch. Cause maybe you don't want to wear podcast merch. We get that. So you can also support us by buying stuff at 7071.thesloopcast.com. That's 7071.thesloopcast.com. And then there's still just merch.thesloopcast.com. Uh, where you can find our actual, like, Ohio State adjacent merch. Uh, no copyright infringement, um, because believe me, Ohio State has let me know when they think I've crossed the line. <laughs> Austin deserves voice privilege on the over under segment. Get a Youngstown Mafia t shirt. I do like that one. That's one of my favorite ones I made. That mm-hmm. one's at the 7071 store. Um, yeah, uh, you can, uh, we see a spot. Oh, got, we're officially posting the TikTok now. Um, if you don't like TikTok, we're also posting the exact same videos on Twitter and Instagram, um, where we're doing highlights. We have a highlight oh, also on YouTube shorts. Uh, so that's four different, four different places. You can find our highlights, 
four. We make one highlight. We post the four places because we are accessible. Jared, you should post it on Facebook too. No. No. <laughs> you get Instagram and you like it. <laughs> I don't even know what that was, but yeah, go go. Uh, we uh, we're gonna post a. Uh, I I know it's owned by the same guy. That's why I said you'll get Instagram and you like it. Um, the culture's different though. Uh, anyway, the what else was I saying? I don't know. Uh, yeah, the, we're doing highlights. All the highlights are under a minute. Uh, and like I said, we're posting them to four different places. Uh, try and follow us on all four of those places. If you're on all four of those places, don't join TikTok because of us, though. Don't do that. No. Do not do that. But if you're already on TikTok, check us out. If you're not already on TikTok, uh, leave one of the other places. I actually really like YouTube Shorts. I think YouTube Shorts uh, has the potential to take over uh, the TikTok yep. field, in my opinion. Yep. Um. Yeah, I, I think YouTube Shorts will eventually, at least for some types of content, overtake TikTok. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, that yes, Austin. Uh, YouTube actually does a decent job moderating their platform Thank comparatively you. to TikTok. <laughs> comparatively. All right. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, just follow us on all those places. Again, if you're watching us on YouTube, we got the we got our uh, rolling uh, links there. Um, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Thanks for keeping me on track, Austin. <laughs> well, they, they, this team right here, Jared. Columbus, Columbus crew, crew. Columbus crew. Columbus crew had a big win. They had a big win this weekend over um, New York City. Uh, they won 3-2, and even though only one of them counted as an own goal, I think both of New York City's goals ended up being like deflection own goals. But uh, yeah, ETM, three assists. Um, um, uh, Cucho had one, and um, Zellerion had two. It was a it was a great performance for the um, the crew, especially especially with their past two games having delays and and all that it's yeah it, it's good it's good that they uh got a win there kyle do you have any uh basketball related kyle's I corner news do as my light keeps changing on me apologize for that uh yes uh where's it at where's it at here we go um there's so many booms here yeah uh right right before we hit record here uh Hase got a another uh big time recruit in basketball and this is a uh, Four star. Um, oh, sorry. It is. Here we go. Um, Scotty Middleton um, out of um, Kansas, Wichita, Kansas. Uh, 6'6, 180 pounds. He's uh, the 34th best recruit for the 2023 class and the sixth best shooting forward. Yeah. Uh, and, Kyle... I, and I believe that, and I believe that put like Ohio State. Uh, yeah, believe it or not, Jared, Ohio State has the fifth best. Oh, no, nope, I apologize. They moved up. They are now the third best um, recruit recruiting team in the 2023 class. How about that? Third, third in basketball and third. Yeah, I was about to say, aren't, aren't they? Does that put them in third in both sports? That did. Yeah. Uh, How about that? Tonight's ending music we brought to you by the Raging Nathans. They are an Ohio-based punk band. They just put out some new music. Let's play one of those songs. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the Raging Nathans. <laughs> 